Hello and Kreiso. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, and today I'm really going to focus on creating a sustainable future. Oh, sorry. So this, this may look a little bit like a Christmas carol. We're looking like past, present and future. Uh, in the past, a decade ago, sustainable investment was very niche. Moving to the present, earlier this year, BlackRock made a statement to say that sustainable investment is no longer niche, it's going mainstream. And if we look ahead to 2020, up to a trillion dollars is expected to be in sustainable investment. And it started to change the investment landscape. It's also known as, it's also known as impact investment, or ESG, environmental social governance. So traditionally, investment has been based upon risk and rewards. But researchers are now seeing there's a new dynamic, and that model is being replaced by a model of risk, reward, and impact. So what is sustainable or impact investment? So if you just look at the circle on the screen here, traditionally it's been very much focused on the gold, the financial impact. But we're now seeing it's more holistic. So you look at the blue, you've got the social impact, and the green is the environmental impact. And it's something which is really capturing hearts and minds. Uh, and that's evidenced by the huge growth. So in the past five years alone, it's grown by 30% per annum. And there's lots of, lots of movements. So this morning, and Andy talked about pensions. Um, there's, there's policies being drawn up at the moment where policy, where pension providers are going to be required to provide ESG statements. So they need to demonstrate how their pension funds are having an environmental, social governance impact. And, that, and that there are other organisations, RE100 was mentioned earlier, Climate Action 100, <coughs> they're starting to uh, impact some of the big, big emitters. So for example, Climate Action 100 have seen put shareholder pressure on the oil and gas companies, uh, and they've recently made statements, that includes Shell, BP and Chevron, and they're tying executive pay to the energy transition to low carbon. Now in terms of opportunities for, for, for sustainable investment, Tidal is a prime candidate. So if we look back at history, we can see 30 years ago, wind was an emerging technology. 20 years ago, few were looking at solar because it was deemed expensive. And 10 years ago, offshore wind was in its infancy. Look at where those industries are at today. So big, established industries. And we believe tidal energy is the next big thing. But like these technologies, they're going to require sustainable investment initially to enable them to grow and flourish. So why tidal? Well, first of all, it's clean. Second, it's predictable. And third, Nova's technology has no visual sighting issues. So if you look at this, this picture here, that's our operating turbines under the water. Now, you'd be very, very welcome to come and visit our site in Shetland, but I must warn you, it's a bit of an anticlimax because you arrive with high expectations to see this glorious technology and you can't see anything. So your first impression may be disappointing, but then you realize it's a massive advantage. It, it, unlike likes of solar or wind or nuclear or coal or gas, you can't see anything and there's no navigational risk. We're now going to watch a video of Nova's tidal energy storage system. So this is a project we completed last year with Tesla. This is where we can combine our tidal turbine technology with energy storage and we're creating a microgrid system. So that's real world ROV footage of our turbines in operation. And as we know, the great thing about the tide, it's predictable minutes, months, years ahead. This is our site in Shetland. So the white dot isn't a real white dot. So this is our partner for the project, Tesla. So it's been great working with them, building a good relationship. This shows a typical tidal cycle generation profile over 24 hours. And by adding energy storage, 
we can deliver baseload power. So storing power during peak production and releasing when there's a slack to give you that constant baseload supply. Not only that, but it also gives you the ability to control and flex to meet variable demand. And as, as we move forward in renewable energy, this is a technology which can be integrated with, with other sources of generation, be that wind or solar, with energy storage and smart technologies, with demand side management, with the growth of electric vehicles, we're gonna see a real, real growth of microgrids and integrated in integration. This is our tidal control center up in Edinburgh. I should say our systems are completely autonomous, but they can be controlled remotely. So that gives you a flavor of, of, of what we've been doing. Now, I just want to draw your attention to the chart on the right-hand side here. So this is showing the real-world output of our tidal array. So the green humps there show your, your traditional tidal generation. But with a combination of energy storage, you can deliver that flat-line baseload output. Now, that's significant. And that's because if you look to the top left of the screen, there's a nuclear power station. Base load has traditionally been the preserve of nuclear, but with tidal and energy storage, we can deliver base load power from a renewable source of energy, which is truly groundbreaking. The difference is tidal is clean and predictable, and uh, it also gives us an ability to deliver variable uh, balancing supply. And that, that helps to hit the targets hit by government in terms of insurance policy and um, diversity and security of supply. Quickly, just coming to um, uh, what we've been doing in our project in Enkley. Uh, we, we got our scoping opinion uh, from NRW in November, and we are um, uh, carrying out our, our work on our EIA at the moment. We're gonna be focused on um, an appro appropriate response, fit for evidence, and uh, a clear environmental statement. And we're looking to use the learnings we've gained in Scotland uh, to bring them to Wales to help us progress and, and develop the sector down here. So quickly, just to, just to close, we need sustainable policies. Wales is, is ideally placed for that. We've got the, the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. Uh, we've got the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We've done an exercise mapping NOVA's capability against those. We, we hit a lot of those. But we also need sustainable investment. And that's through a combination of private-public partnerships um, and that's with the growth of ESG and impact investment. And then that is going to enable us to deliver sustainable energy. So clean power from the natural ebb and flow of the tide. We stand ready to deliver. And initially, we're going to be going after diesel displacement. But by 2030, we want to be in a position where we can displace nuclear. Thank you for listening.